Peter Ferrara on the line with us, the attorney and senior fellow with the Heartland Institute, heartland.org, the website. And Peter, welcome back. Glad to be here. Glad to have you with us. You are pitching personal prosperity accounts. Um, I take it this is the GOP's latest plan to get our Social Security? This is uh, uh, the part of the broad entitlement reform under which uh, we solve the entitlement crisis and the entire fiscal crisis with no benefit cuts for seniors or the poor. In fact, they would do better. We structurally reform these pro- all these programs to rely on savings, investment, incentives, and competition so we can do far more with a lot less. So seniors and the poor do better. The modernized entitlement programs serve them better. Part of this includes the Hartman Plan, in fact, and... Uh, uh, and uh, uh, yet at the same time, this government spending over the long run is reduced by 50%. Okay, they Peter, do. let's just go through some of these, and, and, yeah. I, and I'd like to go through these in the context of, of, you know, basic moral values, this being the holiday season. Let's start with loyalty. Um, it seems to me like we should be loyal to people who have already paid into the system. It, it, a person who retired in October of 2008 and had put 35 years of their money into the stock market instead of Social Security would have lost $26,000 compared to what they would have gotten in Social Security if they had had the stock market in the United States perform like a Japanese stock market performed over that same time, and we seem to be moving in that direction. That person who retires after 35 years would have lost $70,000. So why do we want to screw retirees? There's, uh, there's no benefit cuts in, in any of this. We addressed this all in the, uh, in, I believe this is in the uh, spectator.org uh, column, but I uh, worked with uh, Bill Shipman from State Street Global Advisors, and we did a uh, Well, real study simple question. If, if you had had, if you retired after 35 years in 2008, you would have lost 25000 bucks if your money had been in the stock market as opposed to Social Security. Why are you proposing a program that moves people's money out of the Social Security Trust Fund and into the stock market? Do you want to the answer or not? Do you want me to answer that question or not? Well, the, your answer was go read something, and I'm asking you for the actual well, I'm answer. I'm going to tell you what was in that thing that you should go read. Okay. But I was backing it up with a place where you can actually go read it. That's you can, fine. Uh, read it at thespectator.org. Colin, you can read it in my book, America's Sticking Bankruptcy Bomb. The article was published actually in the Wall Street Journal. Okay. And we went back and looked at the actual performance of the stock market. Suppose you had somebody who'd saved and invested in one of these personal accounts over their entire lives, and they retired just after the uh, financial crisis. What would their results have been? And they would have retired with uh, almost a million dollars in their accounts. In fact, they, would, they were millionaires, but they lost 37% of the value of their accounts in the last year which is after the worst 10 years in stock market history, and they, that, what they had in the, in the account was still enough to pay them 75% more than Social Security even promises them, let alone what they could pay. Now, this is a choice. Well, doesn't Nobody that depend on how long it. they live? No, it doesn't depend on how long they live. But, but, get an but wait a minute, Peter. You. That's a fixed yeah. amount, and Social Security is a pension. It pays you regardless of how long you live. Yes, so you for you to come up with those numbers, you had to have some annuity. age of death, some annuity. assumed go, age of death. Go look it up in the dictionary, annuity. And, and you'll, I, you just don't seem to be familiar with that financial concept. But, but an annuity, you take a fixed amount of money, in return you get a, 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 a benefit for the rest of your life, however long you live. It's like You're right. Reverse. You're right. Okay, so an annuity works very much like Social Security. So you're suggesting that instead of people putting money into the equivalent of a 401k, which is a defined benefit plan, that uh, or a defined, you know, I, I, I mix up my words on these all the time. So basically a 401k where what you get out is what you put in plus, you know, whatever it made or lost in the stock market. You're suggesting that this be put into an annuity. Uh, run presumably by an insurance company who probably is going to invest their money in the stock market. Um, how do you know that the annuity is going to perform that well? Well, you, you, you just do the calculation of standard long-term market investment returns, and over an entire life period, you have lots of ups and downs. And you have some terrible years, and you have some fantastic years. But over an entire lifetime, it averages out. You right, but it, it, it depends on when you retire. I mean, you know... The... No, actually, it doesn't. You, you will always get more from a lifetime of savings and investment than a lifetime of no savings and investment. Well, I, you know, I'll agree with you on that. Why well, security is Social is no Security not sacred to you? Well, we have... Look, it's just we're offering something better than Social Security. It's a choice. But, social, to do but, but, but fully a third, you know, e- e- yes, if you took all the money that goes into Social Security and you put 100% of that into the retirement part of Social Security, probably people would end up, and you, no, and you did no, it through no, a, no, no, let me no, finish my sentence, work. Peter, let me finish my sentence here. Everything you said up to now was false. Okay, but it's not, I'm not going where you think I'm going. 
so I'm not going where you think I'm going, and you can correct me when I'm done. If you took all that money and instead of putting it into retirement benefits, which we've been talking about up to this point, let's keep in mind, a third of all Social Security payments are not for retirement. They're for people who are literally widows, orphans, and disabled people. Yes. How does that is. change your math? It, uh, the math takes it that all into account. And so you're under the full plan, and also this is all proven, it's all worked in the real world. There, I gave three examples in my book of where this has actually worked in the real world. Where, for in the United example? States of America, Chile, Galveston, Texas, and the Federal Thrift Savings Plan. You could, because you're those, all those alternative Peter, benefits you know are, Chile is melting down right now. You, can I explain it to you? Those alternative benefits are, are financed by, uh, so you can do, in addition to the savings and investment, you have insurance. So uh, you, you, part of the money is used to buy life insurance to buy the survivor's benefit. Part is used to buy disability insurance to pay the disability benefit. And then uh, and so all those benefits continue, and they're actually better in the private so, sector so, than the Social Security promises. So what ha- what happens though if you go into the into the private sector and you and you're bu- you're trying to buy disability benefits, and they say, oh wait a minute, uh, you're a cancer survivor, or oh wait a minute, you you have you've had uh, hepatitis C, or oh w- uh, wait a minute, you've had uh, uh, you know I, I, I'm I'm you know. Uh, lupus or something. You really think that they're going to help you out? And by the way, Chile is going down the tubes in terms of their their uh, their uh, uh, you know their social security program. Best it was thing ever happened to working people. Uh, it was imposed upon them in 1981 in by a dictator. It was a choice. The average a choice. rate of return on individual accounts from 1982 to 1986 was 15.9 percent, which sounds great. But when you take out the commissions for the private for-profit companies that run Chile's system, the return was three-tenths of one percent. The returns from 1991 to 1995 averaged 12.9%, which sounds great. But after you take out the management fees, it was 2.1%. For a new worker enrolling in 1996, the 3.5% gross yield actually amounted to a minus 6.8% return after the management fees. I mean, are you... Yeah, it's inaccurate. Look, everybody, they all made, 97% of the workers made the choice one by one for this private system. They, they, uh, they didn't really make a choice. You had a dictator who forced it on them. It was Pinochet. That's inaccurate. That's inaccurate. Why do you sit there and make stuff up all day long? Your you don't think don't Augusto Pinochet was a military dictator? Fact, I'm listening to you like you do the intro, and 90% of what you say is factually inaccurate. And people listen to you who want to hear fantasies and don't want to hear facts, and I guess that's what they get out of your show. Under the, under the program that Pinochet put into place, you were required to contribute 10% of your wages to this government-approved investment program that was run by for-pro- for-profit corporations. You know that. You were perfectly free to stay with the old system if you wanted. 3% of the workers did make that choice. When the chief actuary of Social Security scored Paul Ryan's legislation for personal accounts, he concluded a career bureaucrat that 100% of American workers would choose the personal accounts because they were so obviously a better deal than Social Security. He knows much more about it than you do. That, that's posted on the website. I disagree. I think I know more about this than Paul Ryan does. No, no, no this is a shill for Social Security, and he knows <laughs> Paul more Ryan about it. Paul Ryan is, is a shill for the insurance companies and the banksters on Wall Street. He this has dinner uh, with a $300 bottle of wine with a guy worth billions who's a hedge fund manager. I, you know, I, I can see that handwriting on that wall, Peter. It's the chief actuary of Social Security, not Paul Ryan. But you're not following the argument, so you don't know. You don't understand. But the chief actor of Social Security... Wouldn't privatization, you know, making personal attacks when you can't answer the question doesn't work, Peter. Wouldn't privatization put all of this in the hands of the one... I have with you, my friend. I haven't started them yet. <laughs> okay. All right, well, we're, we'll have to, we're out of time, Peter. We'll have to, we'll have to allow the personal attacks for some other day. <laughs> Uh, Peter Ferrara, attorney, senior fellow at the Heartland Institute, and the guy who has figured out how to save Social Security. You can read all about it at heartland.org. I do not mean that facetiously. Peter, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me on the show. You're welcome.